Hey, and welcome back. This is more book learning. I really hope you guys are getting some great stuff out of this because I sure enjoy making them. I, I learn this stuff a lot better when I when I go over it. And maybe that's something for you to consider. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying to teach one of these to somebody or read the book and and give your own points, whatever. I would love to see that kind of stuff. Feel free to hit me up with it, okay? So today we'll be talking about The One Thing by Gary Keller. The surprisingly simple truth behind extraordinary results. <laughs> now, I know I say this about every book, but this is the one book that you need to read right now. Okay, that might be exaggerating, but only a tiny bit, because the concept that this book teaches augments everything else that you're trying to do in your life. The concept is this. Every day when you wake up, every time you think about your relationship, every time you start work on a project or anything, you ask yourself this question. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? I'll read that again. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will either be easier or it'll be completely unnecessary? This question gets to the heart of prioritization. So here is a great quote by Gary Keller, the author. He says, when you say yes to something, it's imperative that you understand what you're saying no to. This is the point of this book. He's basically saying that if you don't ask yourself this question, you end up spending your time on everyone else's priorities or just wasting your time in some other capacity. <laughs> If, if you choose to do one thing, then you miss out on another. This is called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost can apply to money as well, and that's where it's used a lot, but money is a replenishing resource, so we won't worry about that as much. We can always make more, but we will never get our time back. So we need to guard and cherish our time. Whatever our goals in life are, if we ensure that we're spending our time working towards what's most important to us, we'll be the happiest and the most successful. And here's the kicker. Notice that the second part of the question is, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. He draws a comparison to dominoes. If we can identify the lead domino and knock it over, then it'll help us with all the dominoes down the road, even if they're larger, even if they're huge, right? If we leverage our time like this, we can have the maximum impact on our lives. The concept of opportunity cost is the first golden nugget for today. Always keep that in mind. We have limited time on this planet, so we need to consider our opportunities seriously. The other golden nuggets that we'll go over today are all in the first of the three sections in this book. He calls this section, The Lies, They Mislead and Derail Us. If you're curious, section two is The Truth, The Simple Path to Productivity. And section three is Extraordinary Results, Unlocking the Possibilities Within You. We'll have to save those two for another time, but maybe before you see that video, when it comes out, maybe you'll have read the book by then. So the lies that we'll look at are these three here. Multitasking, what he calls a disciplined life, and big is bad. Let's start with multitasking. Now this is one of my favorite proverbs here. If you chase two rabbits, you will not catch either one. And this is the lie of multitasking. Keller argues that even though there are millions of web, web pages teaching people how to become better multitaskers, and even though career websites specifically list it as a high desire for employers and something that people should list on their resume, it is neither efficient nor effective. What I usually say is that multitasking is just a way to do two things less than half as good as if you were just doing one. Let's say that less than half-assed because it's funnier. <laughs> I just like that. Steve Oozel, I think is how you say his name, put it similarly when he said, multitasking is merely the opportunity to screw up more than one thing at a time. <laughs> the term multitasking was originally created to describe computers, or I guess I should say what computers do. 
At the inception of the computer, the processing speeds were considered so insanely fast that they came up with this term. It's this is pretty funny, especially look, you know looking back now, because your phone now has more processing power than a supercomputer did from the 50s. But here's the real fault of the term. It was describing computers processing th processing things very fast. Yes but they were alternating between tasks, not doing them simultaneously. That's, that's, that's why multitasking is such a confusing word. But our brains work the same way. We can only focus on one thing at a time. We can do two things at once, but not focus on them both. So save multitasking for one task that takes focus and one task that's subconscious, like breathing. I mean, you can probably walk and talk at the same time, right? But even then, you're probably not walking quite as good as you could or talking quite as you good. So I'm not saying don't use multitasking at all. I'm just saying recognize where it is useful and where it's detrimental, really. Otherwise, you lose effectiveness because you're bouncing between two tasks and you lose efficiency because every time you do this, it takes more time to refocus on the task currently at hand. Hope that makes sense. Okay, on to the next lie. A disciplined life. He says, you don't need to be a disciplined person to be successful because success is about doing the right thing, not about doing everything right. This gets into strategy versus tactics, which I talk about from time to time. And this is why I focus so much on fundamentals, like getting the right mental attitude towards whatever you're approaching. Tactics are important, and it can take a long time to learn all the details that are needed to be successful in, in really any area. And I think that's why people focus so much on the details, because they know they're hard to get. But if you're running in the wrong direction, it doesn't really matter how fast you're running. Keep that in mind, okay? Now, he says that you don't need discipline. What do you do? What do you need? You need habits. Rather, you need just enough discipline to turn something into a habit. Researchers at the University College of London did a study that showed, on average, it takes 66 days to develop a habit. Some are easier, some are harder, but maybe this gives you a good baseline. Have you ever tried to do something for like a week? Or, or maybe, maybe you even made it a New Year's resolution or something? Like, I'm going to go to the gym all of January, and then I'll be in great shape. And it still didn't stick, right? <laughs> this is probably why. It takes quite a while to establish a new habit, especially if it's a really good life-changing one or something completely different than what you're used to. The good news, though, is that less and less discipline is required once you establish that habit. So you can use it on something else. If you want to learn more about developing good habits, be sure to check out the video on Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins, if you haven't already. That is a fantastic one. Okay, the third and final lie is that big is bad. There's a book called The Magic of Thinking Big that I really like. I'll, have to, I'll, I'll definitely do a video on that at some point. But a big takeaway from that is that just allowing ourselves to think big opens up our creativity and helps us find a way to do things we previously might have thought were impossible. Here's another one. Have you ever read The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost? Man, this, this book, the, the One Thing, this is like, it's inspiring a lot of stuff that I, that I really like. It makes me, makes me really think about, about all this great stuff. So, um, this this poem, it's a very short poem, The Road Not Taken. So check it out after this. But Robert Frost basically says that he took the path in life that others were afraid to take. And it made all the difference for him. Remember that our lives are about progress. So don't be afraid to, to take that step, to, to dream big a little bit, right? Have you ever heard that good is the enemy to great? That's the next thing here. Keller says that Usually it's not obstacles that prevent us from achieving our goals, but it's a clear path to some lesser goal. This is definitely how I feel about the decade I was in corporate America. It was a clear path, 
a less risky path maybe in some ways, and it kept me from my real goal for a long time. But no more, I say, <laughs> and I hope you say the same thing. And that makes me think about what, you know, what I'm really capable of. What are you really capable of? None of us know until we try. So let's embrace that this life is just about experiments and progress. Let's think big and not hold ourselves back. There will be plenty of people out there who try to do that crap. So let's not be our own worst enemies. So here's what I recommend you do. And I promise I'll do this too. Tomorrow, when you wake up, ask yourself, what is the one thing I can do today that will make everything easier or unnecessary? And then do it. Do that first thing, just do it. And try to implement it in more specific ways, like what's the one thing I can do with my fiance such that everything around our wedding will be easier or unnecessary? That's our summary for the day. What's your one thing? Okay, and now on to the exercise. Pop open the exercise using the button and answer these three questions. One, what do you think of multitasking? There might still be some, uh, some arguments, some good ones maybe, but just tell me what you think about it. Number two, where have you settled for good instead of great? Where have you gone for that easy path or clear path, let's say, the simple path instead of the hard one? And number three, in any aspect of your life that you want to talk about, What's your one thing right now? All right, hope this one was really helpful for you guys. I know this book got me a lot more focused and a lot more able to prioritize where I'm spending my time and, and what I'm doing with my life, really. So hope it does the same for you. Pick it up, read it. Let me hear what you think about it. And I'll see you all next time.